Good morning, everyone. We're uh, here in Lone Pine. We just uh, got in town uh, around uh, four o'clock in the morning. So we're just having uh, turkey, bacon, cheese, and egg. We were supposed to get chorizo from Walmart, but they but, were closed. But they were closed. <laughs> All right, so so yesterday we were supposed to leave. Uh, way, early, way earlier than we we're supposed to <laughs> um, but luckily you know I did a quick quick look over the, the truck like I usually do mm -hmm. and found out that um, the top shock mount and the, the rear shock mount came out somehow so the shock on the upper part wasn't um, bolted in so I had to run to uh, check the supply real quick and get the, the bolt and then put it back in place um, luckily there was like no damage uh, like on the, the shock mount or anything like that so we got lucky there and luckily I found it so it took us took us a while to leave we left at um, 1 in the morning <laughs> to this morning and then uh, made it to here Long Pine and uh, Alabama Hills and you know that was that was pretty much it for me like I was I was tired so I was like you know what let's just pull over let me sleep a couple hours and then that way we can actually go to where we want to. So uh, we're gonna finish uh, our breakfast and then we're gonna head, we're gonna head to our next location and uh, just uh, come join us later. We are heading to Manzanar and you know, pay respect and check around the area, learn more about the history and I think it's an interesting place to bring the girls to. Yeah, so you can see what happened during World War II. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty. It's actually a pretty sad story if you uh, if you look into it. Well, there's a map there. Shows a little of everything. After the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The United States government thought of solving the Japanese problem by relocating more than 120,000 Japanese Americans, two-thirds of whom were native-born American citizens. More than 10,000 of those Japanese Americans, both adults and children, were sent to Manzanar. Only one group at a time. There's someone there. Oh wow. It works? Yes. Does it tell you stories? Roots were pulled up. People's lives were altered forever. And not because of their character, but because of their ethnicity. People who don't know each other were forced to live under the same roof. In the same room without partition, without drapes, without separate lights, and no privacy whatsoever. Our constitution says that we have rights, but for this part of history, it does seem those rights weren't given to those people. Mm. What? <clears throat> so imagine this, with below freezing temperatures, early arrivals had no heaters, nor was there any protection from the severe dust, which came pouring through the openings in the eaves. The wide cracks in the floors by night, sleepers could gaze up at the stars through the knot holes and the slits in the roof. Dang. Man. Oh, look at this. When my mother got into the room, she sat down on one of the mattress and she said, my, what a place. And she never talked about that for many, many years afterwards.
When families moved to Manzanar, their meals were no longer enjoyed around a family table, but rather served in a cafeteria style in mess halls. At times, family members dispersed as they adapt to the culture of the camp. People seek out meals at different mess halls, depending on how good the food at other locations. Cooks are described as untrained, and a variety of food shows lack of insight into Japanese culture. When people come together over food at Manzanar, it is an incense of love and unity. It is a symbol of discord and division. So here's how much they got paid. One, sh like one chef was 19 per month. Time checker, 16 per month. Seven waitresses, 16 per month. Three cooks, 19 per month. Four cooks helpers, 16 per month. And 11 kitchen helpers were 16 per month. So in today's dollars in 2010, that would have been 200 to $250 per month. Mm -hmm. No separation. Oh, so this is the one they're talking about. They what? said they had before they started putting them into the actual barracks room, the buildings. This is they used to have to run over here to use the restroom. Oh, and there's no division. No, it's open bay. When families were forced to move to Manzanar, this camp has been set up so hastily. There have been no schools planned for the youth to attend. While they were restricted to this confined space, the parents had to come up with an idea to make sure their kids and the other people in the community gets educated. Sad truth. That's interesting. Uh, sad. <laughs> yeah, it is. Very sad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is the classroom right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're doing wood carving. Arrested by FBI, detained away from their families. In New Mexico, that must be too hot. Children here, and like even babies. Mm -hmm. But then again, you want to be separated by your children, but you also want them to like be in a more healthier, exactly. like life. So, what? One. So on October twenty fifth, Manzanar High School's football team plays Big Pine High School football teams at Manzanar. Manzanar wins twenty six to nothing and thirty three to nothing. Wow. Yeah. In basketball, traveled to Bishop for a game, but the Bishop School Board cancels the event that day. So this place closed down on November 21st, 21st of 1945. So this is like two something years then? Yeah. So from March of 1942 to November 21st of 1945. Yeah. All right, so we just got done touring this area of Manzanar, um, the, the barracks, the school, the, the mess hall, the bathroom, the combined bathroom they had to deal with uh, until they started putting them in the barracks. Um, the upgraded barracks, I guess you can call it, they tried to make it into like an apartment. Um, the, this place was here, what did I say? March 1942. 
Yeah, March of 1942 to November of 1945. Yeah. So they're not whole time. People got brought here with nothing. But and, a suitcase yeah. full of whatever they can put into it. Sometimes it was like they said just were, diaper and yeah. baby clothes because. Yeah, and the weather here is, you know, either it's really really hot or it's really really cold. Mm -hmm. oh, there's some some uh, verbiage, you know, when one family guy here it was 10 degrees, so imagine showing up 10 degrees weather and not having anything to yourself. You yeah. Know. One lady had two kids and was pregnant with another. And she got sent here. So. Just because they were Japanese. Yeah. That's uh, it. Another note is what? Almost 10,000 people that were here, two thirds of them were citizens. And half of those were under 18. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy numbers if you think about it. And what makes it sad is that they didn't do anything. <laughs> They were they were dragged here just because of their ethnicity. Yeah. Just because they were Japanese. And even the FBI city. was saying that they didn't see anything, any ties to espionage at all, mm -hmm. but they still had to be here. <laughs> so. It's crazy, sad. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's it's a really sad location, you it's, know, but. It's sad, but it's very informative. It's something that I think is very beneficial, especially if you have kids. So if you happen to drive along 395, if you're heading to Tahoe, you're going to Mammoth, or you're going to Vega somewhere, or like, I mean, Nevada. Yeah, sure. yeah check it out. I mean, it, getting familiar with your history is always like the best thing. Yeah. yeah. I hope you learned uh, some, something. some great information from this uh, video. I wouldn't say enjoy it because it's actually a really sad, um, sad place. But uh, there's way too much information for us to put out. Mm -hmm. So you have to come see it for yourself and read all the placards and everything, all the information. Mm -hmm. There's a tons and tons of information what was going on during that time mm -hmm. for that span of, you know, three years. The only best thing about having Manzanar as part of the National Park System is that it allows people like us to come and learn about this ugly chapter of our history. May this painful chapter continuously remind us that during wars, the civilians and those who are in the front line are the ones that pay the highest price. Thank you again everyone for watching. Take care and God bless.